Murray Valley encephalitis has claimed its third life in Victoria's north, a man in his 70s. Unfortunately, of the three confirmed cases in Victoria, all three are deceased. The mosquito-borne virus re-emerging in the state last month after nearly 50 years. We're seeing this occur all over Australia um, and these diseases are on the rise nationally. It's not just Murray Valley encephalitis that's a cause for concern. So in Australia we also have several other viruses that we worry about. We have Japanese encephalitis, we have Ross River virus, we have dengue and we also have Barber Forest virus. We know that this mosquito season is not over yet. You just need to have, you know, one infected mosquito to cause these really unfortunate diseases. Judith Hunt became sick with the Ross River virus two years ago, bitten by a mosquito on a family caravan trip. It feels like when you're standing on your feet that someone is putting knives into the bottom of your feet. I couldn't get out of bed couldn't stand on my feet. Judith still lives with pain today. The joint pain, not being able to work, um, ongoing chronic fatigue at this stage, so it's been two years now, so I, st I still get fatigued. Um, I can still manage to get through my day and I just find if I do too much one day, then the next day, then I'm exhausted. Australia's record-breaking rain has fuelled a bumper mosquito season. That's fantastic from a mosquito breeding point of view. And that's the problem, of course, because that's going to increase into the future. And while there is a vaccine for Japanese encephalitis, there is currently no treatment or vaccine for Murray Valley encephalitis or the Ross River virus. So with mosquito-borne viruses on the rise, just how worried should we be? Dr Ali Zaid is a viral immunologist and he joins us now. Uh, Dr Zaid, if I'm bitten by an infected mosquito, which is carrying one of these viruses, am I going to get seriously ill? So it depends on the virus. So if you're talking about a virus like uh, Murray Valley or Japanese encephalitis, the odds of you developing the disease are quite low. So I think it's just about 1% uh, of people who um, get infected will develop um, symptoms. And as a result, that's one of the things that's a bit tricky with these viruses because they're hard to pick up. Um, people get infected and they won't show any symptoms. Um, but for other viruses like Ross River virus, the, um, uh, the rate uh, of symptoms is, is a bit higher. Um, but those are self-resolving diseases and Ross River virus doesn't really uh, cause death like Murray Valley and Japanese encephalitis do. Um, so surveillance is one of the key approaches here. And um, the, the more we we know about um, how distributed the virus is in the population, um, the better an idea we get of how widespread it is. So as you say, surveillance is important. So what are mm -hmm. the symptoms? When it's bad, what, what are we meant to look out for? So when people do develop um, clinical symptoms, it starts off with fever and headaches and uh, nausea and it can progress to vomiting. Um, but when the disease progresses to the more severe form of the pathology, um, this is encephalitis, which essentially means an inflammation of the brain. And so neurological symptoms start to appear. And um, unfortunately, in a lot of cases, when um, uh, pro symptoms progress that far, um, this is quite concerning and this is, uh, this is something that can lead to death, yes. And, and of that 1%, who get symptoms in the first place, mm -hmm. how many would end up with what you're just describing mm -hmm. there? Yeah, so because there aren't that many cases, this remains quite a rare disease. It's estimated it can be anywhere between 5 and 15% of people, but there's not a lot of data out there. What are we supposed to do for protection? Because if there's mozzies are about, like how do we not get bitten? It's very hard to prevent it. So there's typically two, um, two approaches. So you can, um, you can take it from the vector uh, angle, so the mosquito itself and trying to control mosquito populations. So typically this involves um, spraying and controlling the population around wetlands, but particularly where people live. So approach, but the main management uh, approach is for us to protect ourselves against mosquitoes. So obviously use mosquito repellent if we're out, but um, obviously avoid being out in areas where mosquitoes are abundant and obviously you know, uh, wearing long sleeves uh, clothing um, that really uh, creates a barrier uh, against mosquitoes. Ali, the, the problem I have is if there's one mosquito in the country, it will find me and eat me. <laughs> I'm just one of these people that is, I'm the first bitten in any gathering and it just, it's endless. It sounds like you're bragging. Uh, no. <laughs> hey, I'm happy you're to swap. You're just so tasty. I'm, I'm, <laughs> no, it's, it's a real burden, Ali, it really is. Uh, but you're not a psychologist. What I would like to know is why does that happen? Why do some people get eaten and other people just don't get touched? 
Uh, there's, there's some really cool studies that just came out uh, like last year that showed that there's some, some compounds that we release in our smell, so in our, in our sweat, that mosquitoes happen to be very attracted to. And um, some of those compounds um, are also found in, um, how to put this, um, smelly feet. Hey. Oh. Hey. Hey. Yeah, okay, I'm, I regret asking you that question. <laughs> um, so I'm going to end it. Thank you very much for speaking to us. <laughs> Thank you.